All right, okay, let's get started. Um, hello, my name is Lee Te Wu, and welcome to the Uretina 2020 Quantel Medical uh, Symposium on Subliminal Laser. I have the pleasure of chairing this uh, symposium with uh, some of my colleagues here, and I will be giving the first talk on subliminal laser current concepts. So why do we use subliminal laser? It's uh, the reason behind using subliminal laser is to eliminate the iatrogenic damage from conventional macular photocoagulation. And conventional macular photocoagulation is essentially the same as continuous wave photocoagulation. We already know from uh, several decades of work when we do conventional photocoagulation is that the power deliver is throughout the entire pulse of the laser that we've selected. And that is essentially a duty cycle of 100%. We already know as well that uh, we can try to avoid uh, having this iatrogenic damage by uh, modifying some of the parameters. We know that our target is the RPE, and we know that by using conventional or continuous wave photocoagulation, there's a heat expansion that occurs both in the vertical and the horizontal direction. To avoid this, we can use uh, less uh, time, but in addition, over the years, there has been um, a new uh, development where we use, uh, we play with the duty cycle mode. And before that, I need to clarify some things. The idea is to do some sub-threshold work that in the past has been also called as micropulse and currently we're calling subliminal. So there's really no difference between sub-threshold mode, subliminal mode, and micropulse mode. It is important to note that we use subliminal mode in macular treatment. So I am going to uh, show you how we do this treatment. And the idea behind the subliminal technology is that we want to use the duty cycle. As I alluded previously, uh, we will be uh, using the duty cycle to allow a cooling time so the heat is directed towards the RPE and it does not expand in either the lateral or uh, the vertical direction. In order to do so, we need to define the duty cycle. So the duty cycle uh, means that, for instance, if we use this 5% duty cycle, it means that when we fire the laser, the laser will be firing only 5% of the time and 95% of the time, the laser will be off. This off time will allow the tissue to cool down and it will prevent the spread of heat in the vertical and horizontal direction. So uh, this low, low thermal diffusion due to the long off time between each pulse, it's what is in the essence of the subliminal technology. What is the ideal subliminal laser? So the ideal subliminal laser has to have a yellow wavelength, has to have multi-spot technology and a low duty cycle. So in terms of wavelength, does it matter? So to obtain the best results with maximum efficacy and safety, the ideal laser should have a uniform thermal effect, a good penetration through opacities, and a low energy absorption by the xanthophyll, uh, which is the pigment present in the macular areas. You can see these are the extension, the absorption curves from the laser. And we see that the target here is the melanin, and here we have a second peak in the hemoglobin. See here with the yellow 577, 
that we get a very good absorption with the melanin as well as a, the highest peak here in the oxyhemoglobin. And we are avoiding completely the xanthophyll pigment right here, which is a problem with the 532 lasers. Conversely, uh, the more the infrared lasers, we will get uh, a lower absorption on the melanin and even lower on the oxyhemoglobin. So uh, does it matter the wavelength? Absolutely, and the best is 577. Another advantage of this is that it allows us to titrate the power mode directly under subliminal mode and allows us to reach a visible endpoint under subliminal mode. The second point is that we really need multi-spot technology in order to uh, give a very efficient uh, subliminal treatment. And this is how the multi-spot uh, works. We have the laser cavity, which uh, uh, transfers the heat through an optic fiber in through a scanner. And then there are two uh, motorized mirrors that moves uh, the, uh, the pattern so that we get the burns in the pattern that we choose. It is important multi-spot in subliminal mode because that uh, allows us to have confluent laser therapy. Uh, there's a lower risk of under-treatment with multi-spot, and monospot is very difficult in application. Mind you that when we're do dealing with subliminal laser spots, the laser spots are not visible. So try putting a uh, hundred uh, spots that are uh, invisible to your naked eye, uh, one next to the other without uh, the multi-spot. The most common cause of treatment failure is under treatment. And in terms of the duty cycle, uh, we are working with a 5% duty cycle. Many years ago, Victor Chong, one of our panelists here, uh, performed this study where they looked at different wavelengths and different duty cycles and came up with, uh, that, uh, with the result that the 5% duty cycle was uh, the safest uh, duty cycle in the yellow mode to provide uh, subliminal treatment. Uh, so uh, we really want a dense treatment with the large spot sizes. And many of you who are not familiar with this technology are going to look at the large 160 micron spot sizes and will question this. But remember, there's no intended, ther intended thermal injury using the subliminal. So we can use this large 160 micron spot size. And these are used in order to increase the treatment area and to ensure a dense delivery of the laser impacts. So for instance, if we want to treat this area, a 25 by 50 uh, microns, uh, if we were to continue using the, five, uh, the 50 micron spot size, we will need 81 spots to fill this area. However, if we use 160, we are still using the 25 uh, spots. <clears throat> we have developed uh, treatment guidelines over the years, and these were uh, leaded by Victor Chan and Quan Gwen over the years, and uh, the suggestions are the following. We really uh, just need to modify a few things. Uh, so the spot size is always 160 microns. Uh, put the laser in the subliminal mode. The duty cycle by default is 5%, and the exposure time is 0.2 seconds. We recommend a laser that gives you approximately a one-to-one -one magnification in the retina, and such laser is the Volk Area Centralis. So the only thing that we really need to worry about is the power titration. And in order to do so, we need to determine the thermal threshold. And in doing so, we increase the power level until we reach a visible endpoint. Then we need to uh, put the multi-spot delivery uh, mode to implement the subliminal treatment. And the important thing here is to verify the spacing is at zero. By default, it is. And then we need to lower uh, the thermal threshold to 50% of the power level and use it to treat the patient. So how do we determine the power level? So we look at the 
at the macular periphery in the healthy area. And uh, we start the power titration in subliminal mode with a duty cycle of 5%. And we slowly increase the power level until a barely visible threshold burn is observed. Important things to note is that you should not be seeing a visible reaction during the treatment. Uh, there is no need to change the power at different degrees of edema, and the laser impacts must be confluent. It has to be a dense treatment. Therefore, uh, that's why we need the multi-spot pattern av availability. In terms of uh, pathologies that we treat, we recommend for DME that we use an OCT-guided uh, <clears throat> treatment, and for central serous, a fluorescein or ICGA-guided treatment. So again, with the easy ret, uh, it is uh, fairly easy to do the power level titration. And with the newest software, there's a line pattern that is used to determine the thermal threshold of each patient. And again, we choose an area outside the area of treatment. And uh, once uh, we select the power, you can see there are different steps and you can sort of uh, change the power increments according to uh, what you like, 50 milliwatts or more or less. And then uh, we throw, we fire, and then we'll get five different burns. And once we reach the burn that we want, we can select the power, the desired power. <clears throat> once we do that, uh, again, we put it in the subliminal mode, choose the titrate power uh, selection here as seen here in the diagram, and then we choose the pattern, and there is going to be a reminder uh, to avoid uh, accidents uh, that it tells you to decrease the power before treatment. Remember, it's gonna be 50% of your uh, titrated power. And then uh, we choose uh, the patterns that we want uh, accordingly, uh, and uh, remember you have the resume function that will allow you to come back and finish uh, your treatment if for some reason your treatment is interrupted. We have these uh, customizable macular grids where uh, we can sort of avoid the fovea and uh, we have these other squares if you want to treat outside uh, the fovea, outside uh, the central area. <clears throat> So uh, remember, during the subliminal treatment, you should not be seeing any reaction. If you're seeing it, then uh, you must uh, stop and dial down your power. There's no need to change the power with different degrees of edema. And remember that the laser impacts must be confluent. Again, for DME, we use an OCT-guided treatment. And for central serous, it's going to be a dye-based uh, uh treatment guide. <clears throat> Many might uh, question, should we shoot the fovea? How close can we go? In theory, uh, these are all sub-threshold uh, treatments. So uh, uh, there shouldn't be a problem if you treat the fovea. However, transfovial treatment is not necessary and not recommended, especially for new subliminal users particularly in cases of DME. Remember that in DME, we are treating areas. And in reality, the fovea is a very, very small area uh, comprising the rest of the macula. So if we uh, don't treat it initially, that is probably fine and most cases uh, will do fine. However, in certain pathologies such as central serous, sometimes the area of uh, pathology are near the fovea or subfovea, and you might need to do that. And we will hear uh, from uh, one of our panelists uh, uh, further on when to do so. So in summary, the key characteristics of an ideal laser for macular work are uh, subliminal mode, multi-spots, and the yellow wavelength. Thank you very much for your attention.